Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards. This is a video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Throne Room. This is a four-cost action card from the base game and it says you may play an action card from your hand twice. Now before we look at the strategy around Throne Room, um, I thought it would be worthwhile to just look at a couple of rules nuances around this card. These are things if you've played a lot you'll be familiar with, but they are areas where throne room can kind of trip people up. Um, so I'm just going to zoom through these, um, but they are things you should be aware of. Um, so when you play a card twice with throne room, only the on play effect happens twice. So that's anything above the dividing line is what we call the on play effect. Um, so two cards where this is quite important. Um, and usually the first time people notice that this is a problem are Goons from Prosperity and Highway from Hinterlands. Um, these have very powerful effects below the line, like Goons get you points every time you buy a card, Highway gives you cost reduction. You do not get these bonuses two times. Only the stuff above the line gets done twice. So you get a lot of buys and money with Goons, and you will get two cards and two actions when you throw in Highway but you won't get the bottom effect. Compare Highway to Bridge from Intrigue, which has its cost reduction not below a dividing line, um, and with Bridge you actually do get the cost reduction twice, but not with Highway. Um, there are cards that we call one-shots. These have bonuses that usually involves getting rid of the card in order to get the bonus. Um, you, so you might trash a card, you might set it aside, you might return it to one of its piles. Um, so sometimes this bonus is conditional on actually getting rid of the card. You have to get rid of the card to get the bonus. And sometimes you'll always get the bonus whether the card is gone or not. So if we look at Mining Village here from Intrigue, it's just a regular village, but it says you may trash this for two coins. Um, so if you throw in a Mining Village and you on your first play, you can choose to trash it and you get two coins for it. Um, and then even though it's in the trash, you do get to play it a second time. Um, however, you can't trash a card when it's already in the trash. That means that it's not possible to get the two coins a second time. Now compare this with horse. This is a card that you gain from other cards in Menagerie. There's quite a lot of cards that give you horses. This is a laboratory, but it returns back to its own pile after you've played it. So if you've thrown a horse, um, you get the two cards in one action, it goes back to its pile, the, the horse goes back, um, and then you get to play it again, and even though it's no longer in play, um, you still get a second lot of two cards in one action, and then it tries to go back to its pile, but it's already there, so nothing happens with that. So, you know, horse is good with throne room, uh, you get two sets of its benefit, and you lose the card in either case, um, but cards like Mining Village, you know, you might not get as much as you think if you're not careful. Uh, duration cards are a pretty common card across a number of expansions. They stay in play for a number of turns. And it's easier, I think, to think that throne rooms are sort of like sticky when you play them with duration cards. They stay in play as long as the duration card does. So um, duration cards have sort of an issue where um, one of them, you don't get to play them as often because they stay in play. And if you throw in duration cards, then you don't get to play your throne room as often either because it stays in play for a longer time. I've got down here a hireling as an example. This is a particular one where hireling stays in play all game. So if you throw in hireling, then you will get to draw extra cards from it, which is nice. Um, but you do effectively lose the throne room because the throne room also stays in play for the rest of the game. And lastly, ways from Menagerie. These are things that sit out on the table and they let you swap an action card's on play effect. That's the stuff above the line for whatever's written on the way. Um, and you get to choose that every time you play a card. And just so you know, yes, you do get to make, make that choice for both plays of the card that you've thrown. So you could, for example, use Way of the Mole twice. Um, in this example. So enough about all those little rules bits, let's talk about the card itself. Um, so Throne Room, what's really important about this? Um, when you first look at Throne Room, you might think to yourself, so why would I get a Throne Room instead of just like a second copy of a card that I want? And a key feature of Throne Room is the fact that you only play one you only pay, sorry, one action for both of those uses of the other card. So when you play a card from your hand and you get to choose, um, 
like let's say at the start of your action phase, that's when you pay an action. Um, but when you are following a card's instructions and it tells you to play another card, that extra play is always free. So think about like Vassal, how Vassal gets to pl- discard a card and then immediately play it. You do not pay a second action for that card that it p- plays. And the same is true of Throne Room. So Throne Room is often considered kind of like a village. That's because you're getting two card plays for the cost of only one action. So if you think about a card that has plus one action on it, um, you are paying one action, but in the end you get two actions back. So that's kind of like a village, right? And that's why people think Throne Room, they sort of consider it to be like a village. So if you do the do-nothing cantrip effect, um, so this is something we talk about in a number of videos. A cantrip means plus one card and plus one action. Um, a do-nothing cantrip is something that only gives you that. So if you think about throwing a card that it only does that effect for you, then that's kind of the same as playing Village. You played two cards, you drew two more, so it got the same hand size, and you end up with one more action overall. So that's the same result as just playing a single Village. Um, of course... Throne Room isn't just another village pile, it's actually a very different card. Um, So how is it different from a village? Well, if you think about a situation where you have a smithy in your hand and a throne room, um, if you play the throne room on the smithy, you play the smithy twice, you get six cards, and that's really good. Um, But then you don't have any actions left, right? That was your one action and you've spent it. Now, if you swap the throne room out for a village you play the village first and then you play the smithy, you've drawn four cards in total, which is not as many, but you still have one action left. So you can see that throne room doesn't quite work like a regular village in that regard. Um, It sort of, it really depends on what you play the throne room on. It sort of depends on what you get out of it. Um, Now, you can play throne room on throne room, and this is what we call a throne room chain. So sometimes you may have a deck where all of the action cards are terminal. So there is not a single card out there that has plus one action written on it anywhere. Um, And if you look at the previous example on the previous slide about Smithy, um, you know, you might first think, well, Throne Room doesn't sound very good because if I just like play Throne Room on a Smithy, then that's all the actions that I get. I still am sort of only really getting one type of action card played. But if you play Throne Room on Throne Room, then that second Throne Room gets to be played twice. So you can actually play multiple other action cards in your turn. Um, now, what you can do is you can like alternate these. So if you play a Throne Room on another throne room, then you get to do something like play smithy, draw six cards, and now the second play of the throne room gets to pick from all of those new cards that you drew. And if it picks another throne room, well, now again, you get to pick something like, I don't know, a mine or whatever, and then you can pick another throne room. And you can just sort of keep that chain going. Um, You don't have to alternate the cards. You could just play like three throne rooms up front. Um, It's just easier to keep track of things if you alternate the plays. Right, you sort of know how you're going. And then at the end, you get to play. If you run out of throne rooms, you sort of get to play two action cards um, with your last throne room. So there's a big problem with throne room chains um, compared to a regular village, and that is that you've got to have two throne rooms in your hand to actually kick it off. Right, you've got to play a throne room on another throne room. Now, you don't, you know, you don't have to play two villages from your hand before you get to play your first smithy. So throne room needs a pretty high density of uh, throne rooms in your deck in general to actually get started. If you are relying on throne room chains, obviously this is not the case if you have like regular villages in your deck, um, and you're not choosing to throne throne rooms, um, then you know that's not a problem. Now, if you do have other villages or non-terminal actions in your deck, then you don't necessarily need to throne chain, um, but it can be useful because it does actually still save you actions. A throne room chain, no matter how long it is, you only spend one action on that initial throne room, right? That's the only card in the whole chain that you're not being forced to play by following a card's instructions. Um, So, you know, you only spend the one action on the initial throne room. Now, that makes 
Chaining Throne Room sound really good, right? You save all of these actions and you get to play all of these cards while only spending the one action. So what you find is a lot of people, when they first start playing with Throne Room, every time they draw two or more Throne Rooms together, they're going to start playing Throne Room on all their Throne Rooms. And they just chain the Throne Rooms as much as possible. Um, you actually don't necessarily want to do this. Um, so usually, sometimes you just don't need to save the actions. Um, you've got enough actions in your deck that you, you're not you're not that worried about um, you know being super tight on actions right now. Um, and what it is is that with Throne Room, there's usually certain cards that you want to play it on. Some cards are going to be way better being throned than others, right? Not every card is of the same power level. And what you really want to do is you want to improve your odds that you get to throne the cards that you actually want to. So usually you want to try and throne um, as late as possible. And specifically, you only want to chain um, as late as possible because a, a chain... Once you start chaining throne rooms, you know, you are forced to either, you know, give up on the extra card play completely, which is bad, um, or you must make a decision there and then onto what card that you want to throne. And what that means is that you might force yourself into a hand where you've only got like all of these weak cantrips that you've drawn in like actually I don't really want to throw in any of these right now but because you've changed your throne rooms you have to and that means that you've you sort of missed a throne room play on a better card when you do that so I would say stop and think before you chain throne rooms sometimes of course you've got these deck where all you're doing is chaining throne rooms in order to actually play it but uh, if that's not the case then, you know, you can end up with an abundance of actions very easily with Throne Room. So maybe you don't have to Throne it, right? Just just be careful with that. Uh, now, Throne Room, another way in which it's not like Village at all that has a problem um, is that Throne Room can really dud um, if you're unlucky or you build your deck wrong. So if you imagine that you drew a hand of four villages and a copper, um, you can just play all the villages and you draw four more cards and hopefully, you know, you get to find something else. Um, this is not the case with Throne Room. So Throne Room does not inherently draw on its own. If you don't have another non-throne action to play with your Throne Room, then the Throne Room is doing absolutely nothing for you. Um, it is a complete dud card. It might as well be a curse or an estate as far as you care. It's not going to give you any money. It's not going to draw any cards. It's just going to do nothing at all for you. Um, now, even if you have a pretty low density of like throne rooms in your deck, as long as you have at least five of them, there is a theoretical possibility that you could draw like all of them into your hand, or you can draw them with like the eventual provinces that you pick up, or if you have any treasures, you can draw throne rooms with them. Um, it's just something that happens. Um, that doesn't mean that buying lots of throne rooms is necessarily bad. Um, you just sort of have to be aware that uh, it's not actually all that unusual to get what I call the throne stack of doom, where you start your hand with just a bunch of throne rooms. Um, a lot of decks, just occasionally you get really bad draws. Um, and throne room, just be aware um, that it happens. You're probably going to remember when you have a bad throne room hand because they're just so bad. Um, but it's not it's not out of the ordinary to sometimes get them. And, and it will lose you the game sometimes when it happens, but that's just like the randomness of Dominion. Sometimes, despite all of your best efforts, your draws just do really badly um, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but bear in mind, of course, that you can also not overthrown. You're, you're, of course, way more likely to find a deck like this if you get too many throne rooms too early. Um, so, or if you have like a lot of coppers. Uh, if you get throne room straight away, um, then, you know, you can end up with it not pairing up with another action card, and that's quite bad. Um, so this sort of leads on to an important point where throne room is really, really good if you have good control over your deck. So just to reiterate there what we talked about, um, you really need a high density of action cards to avoid like throne rooms giving you these duds. If you've got a load of coppers, all of your starting cards left over, let's say, like, imagine there's no trashing. So you've got seven coppers and you've got three estates. Um, early on in the game, you're really likely to draw a lot of those. Um, and what that means is that if you buy a throne room, like if you open a throne room, odds are very high that it's only going to pair up with coppers and estates and it'll be completely bad. So you wouldn't do that. 
Um, a lot like festival, you know, throne room has to work a little bit harder to actually um, connect with other action cards than the regular village does that has that plus one card on it. Um, except, of course, throne rooms a lot worse than festival in cases where it completely does, because at least festival is going to give you some money, but throne room won't. Um, so with Throne Room, you'll get to choose what other action card you play from your hand. Um, so Throne Room, the more that you get to benefit from this choice, the better Throne Room's going to be. Throne Room likes you to have multiple different types of action cards in your hand so that you can get the effect that you want at that time. So like you don't always necessarily want to be like playing Throne Room on Smithy or whatever as an example. Sometimes you want it for more of a regular village effect. So if you also have a merchant in your hand, you can decide at the time and say, hey, actually, I'm going to play the Throne on the merchant to get like a village effect and then I will play the Smithy. Um, and just by having more different action cards in your hand, you get to take advantage of that choice. Um, if you draw a hand of like one throne room and four smithies, then that really stinks because your turn is basically over no matter what, because um, if you've thrown the smithy, you draw a load of cards, but you can't really do anything else with your turn. So um, throne room, yeah, so it really wants control. It really wants good trashing um, and filtering because... Well, like I mentioned earlier, you kind of want to play the throne room as late as possible where you can do so. Um, it really helps to actually try and get that first. So, you know, cards that sort of help you draw up a little bit first sometimes and generally um, help you connect the cards you want. So cards like laboratory, cards like um, cellar to some extent, you know, maybe it's better um, brethren like warehouse. Um these sorts of cards are very, very good at helping you um, connect cards together. And Throne Room is a card that really, really wants to be drawn together with other things in your deck. So anything that you have at all that helps you do that is really, really good for Throne Room. Um, now, Throne Room, we've, we've talked a lot here about Throne Room acting kind of like a village. Um, but that's, that's not really what it does. Throne Room has one big main strength, and that is that it gets to change what it thrones on. So, you know, it's easy to think of Throne Room as like, say you want to play two witches on a turn, you know, you buy one witch, and then it's like, well, okay, do I get a second witch, or do I get another Throne Room, right? And then if you get a Throne Room, it's like, hey, you know, now that Throne Room, I, I get two witch plays with it. And on its own, that sounds pretty good. Um, but what's also really good is that once the um, all the curses run out, you actually get to change what the throne room plays. Maybe you decide, actually, I don't really want to play it on Witch anymore. I want to play it on Smithies instead. Um, and that same throne room that you bought now does something else completely. So if you think about cards like Remodel, Remodel, one of its benefits is that it gets to change eventually what your cards do in your deck. So once all the curses run out, you can like turn the witch into a smithy, but it's going to cost you an action to play the remodel. The witch doesn't get played. You know, it, this new smithy goes into the discard and you don't really get to see it until you've drawn your deck or basically next turn. Um, and that's kind of sad, but the throne room happens immediately. As soon as you decide, actually, I don't really want to throne the witches anymore. Well, now it gets to throw in the smithies. So throne room's just like this exceptional value in the way that it gets to mould itself to what it is that you actually want to do at the time. So, you know, when you think that early on you're looking to trash and junk your opponent and then you later on will want to be gaining cards as you and drawing your deck and then eventually you might want to be like playing bandit a lot to gain golds and then you remodel those golds into um, provinces. Um, Throne lets you do more of what you want as the game goes on, but it's not even just as the game goes on and how Throne Room might change from turn to turn, because the cards that you want to Throne will actually change during your turn as well. So if you think about um, how in a typical like the traditional village smithy example that I use a lot in these videos, but it really is um, 
an example of this. Usually you want to start your turn by playing villages and drawing your deck with smithies, and then you have these payload cards, which are the things that you're actually trying to do on your turn that all come at the end, ideally. You usually play them last. Well, that's you changing what type of cards that you want to play in the middle of your turn, like the cards you want to play early on in the turn are not the same as the cards you want to play later on, and every throne room that you have gets to pick what you want to do, uh, depending on which stage of your turn you're in. So early on you play it on the smithies to get more draw, or you play it on the village to get more actions, and then at the end of your turn any throne rooms that you have left get to play on your payload to pay more. Um, and they're the same throne rooms, right? They, well, the throne room that you buy is no different from the other, but as you buy more of them, you know, you you distribute them through your deck, ideally. You know, sometimes they clump. That's just Dominion. Um, and what it means is that, you know, that throne room, one turn, maybe it was the specific card that you played on your payload, but on the next turn, it's one that you actually play on a smithy instead, right? So you get this enormous flexibility with throne room. Um, that's very important. Um, and this second slide here is everything that I basically just said, but I um, I said it without going to this slide, so very sorry you can read it here now. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to change the slide. Um, yeah, so Throne Room, you know, it's, it's giving you that... Um, it, the way that it shapeshifts itself is just an incredibly strong effect, and that's sort of the main... To many ways, the main benefit of Throne Room, you're adding this card into your deck that basically just gets to be whatever it is that you need at the time. Um, it, it's multiple different cards all in one, basically. Um, and what this means is that Throne Room is like a massive accelerator for your deck. So normally at any stage of the game, your deck has certain cards that you really want to play a lot. So maybe you want to trash a lot early on. Maybe you want to gain a lot of cards at some point. So you've got like Workshop. Um, Throne Room in an ideal world lets you do the most important thing for your deck um, a lot more quickly. So like as soon as you add your first Witch into your deck, potentially you can get two plays out of it instead of one. So suddenly your deck's really, really good at junking, um, way better than it would normally be. And this this just means that your deck gets very strong very quickly when Throne Room is in the kingdom, usually. Um, you know, so if you think that you have to have, like, laboratories or smithies to draw your deck, well, if you've already got some Throne Rooms, um, now all of a sudden when you add that lab, potentially you get even more draw out of it. So suddenly you find that it's quite easy to draw your deck. Like, you're you're getting double the draw value just by adding that extra lab, potentially. Um, so Throne Rooms is very, very strong. Um because of the way that you have to have deck control, which are usually the strongest decks, um, Throne Room takes those strong decks and makes them even better. They become very, very powerful. Throne Room definitely pushes you more in favour of the like the strong engine type of deck, which ideally would be the sort of deck that you're playing anyway. Um, but when Throne Room is on the board, you usually can't ignore it. It's just so strong. Um, whenever you look at examples of like examples of very strong types of decks um, they usually have some sort of throne room or some of its more powerful variations like king's court in them just because this kind of effect is just so strong and they're very good accelerators throne room engines can suddenly get into gear very quickly and before you know it your opponent is just getting so many cards and they're double promising they're triple promising and like wow where did this come from how did their deck get up to speed so quickly and cards like throne room is what does it um so most action cards become better with throne room if you just think of throne room as being another action card in your deck but it has plus one action tacked onto it. Well, a lot of cards get a lot better in that situation. Um, in fact, some cards that aren't necessarily very good can start to become really good simply just because they are an action card um, and Throne Room is around. So if you think of an example of a card that's like Terminal Silver, so say you have like a Vassal and there's no card in your draw pile or discard, or it's just like a Terminal Silver, um, and that's usually pretty bad. Um, regular silver would normally be better in those cases. But if you think about the way that you might still have a throne room left over after you've drawn your deck, well, you can throne that vassal in a way that you couldn't do with silver, and now it's giving you even more money. Right, so think about militia. 
Uh, militia is a card you normally would never want a second militia because the attack only really works once. Right, your opponent discards down to three and then they can't discard anymore on a second play. Um, but if you have a throne room, you might be able to get two more money out of it. So anytime you think to yourself, oh, I don't, I don't really... Um, or, you, sorry, you're saying, I need more money in my deck. Right, more economy. And you might think to yourself, well, you know, maybe I've got four, maybe I'll buy a silver. You know, stop, wait, you might not need another silver. What you could do instead is you could buy a throne room and you could just play the throne room on the militia next time you draw your deck. And that gives you two money. But it, what's really important is that that throne room, now that you've got an extra one, you know, the, the rest of your throne rooms will be slightly more distributed throughout your deck. So it's easier to play the throne rooms on other things earlier in your deck, right? It's a lot more card useful early on than like silver. You'd rather have the throne room in your starting hand than you would have had the silver. Um, and of course, because throne room gets you extra plays of powerful cards, you can sometimes think of throne room as being a second pile of a particular card. So certain cards like, for example, Laboratory can sometimes empty pretty quick. If you think like Laboratory is the only draw in the game, everybody wants as many of them as possible, um, and the pile can just run out. Well, Throne Room, it can be seen as like another pile of Laboratories. If you are able to play all of your Throne Rooms on the Laboratory, you've got like twice as much draw out of it. Um, so... Yeah, so Throne Room, when, when you have these really strong cards in the game, Throne Room just helps you get even more plays out of that. It's another pile that lets you do that. But what's really important here, particularly in the example of like Laboratory, is that Throne Room only costs four, right? And it's, it's a better than a lab because it's a laboratory with an extra action tacked on top, right? It's a laboratory and it's a village at the same time. Um, and you get that for just four coins. Um, Throne Room is a card you would quite happily pay five for. It has some variants and they cost five and it's perfectly fine price. Um, if you've seen a lot of these other videos before, you know, because I've said it so many times, that Throne, you know, cards that cost four, sorry, um, they're a lot cheaper than cards that cost five. It's so much easier to gain four cost. Um, and at only costing four, Throne Room is unbelievably good value. This is so cheap for what you get for Throne Room. It is a crazy strong card, um, and it's just ridiculously cheap. Uh, so it's really, really good card, Throne Room, if it wasn't clear enough already. Um, now, is Throne Room less reliable than cards? So, you know, we've talked about um, the Throne Stack of Doom as an example, right? There's a case where we said, uh, you know, oh, Throne Room, you get too many too early, you dud pretty hard. Does that mean Throne Room is unreliable? Well, I'd say that it's not really any less reliable on the whole than like a regular village. Uh, and the reason for that is that while Throne Room can sometimes dud early on, you need to get like maybe two Throne Rooms into your hand at the start. Um, or you have that example where, you know, if you only draw it with terminal actions, your turn is dead. Um, but the truth is, is that once you get going with the a deck that has Throne Room in, it's usually very reliable and can draw the rest of itself very easily. That is because you can, in the middle of your turn, decide, oh, you know, I need a bit more draw. Just going to play the Throne Room on a smithy. Boom, you know, there's six more cards. And then it becomes very easy to start playing Throne Room on other things or find more villages. So I would say that although you tend to remember the really bad dud throne room hands, in reality, um, it's sort of a bit of a wash in terms of reliability of your deck. It doesn't really impact it. Um, you know, it's just, it shifts it slightly to being slightly worse to get your deck going, but way easier once it's already going. Um, one problem with throne room, however, is that it is kind of inconsistent. So if you think that, you know, you're hoping at the end of your turn to play a throne room, on a market or like a militia for a bit more money, it might be that for reliability reasons, you ended up playing a throne room on a smithy earlier in the turn. And then once you've drawn your deck, you've got like this extra smithy in your deck that you aren't playing because you throned a smithy earlier um, and you don't have that throne room left over to play on your market or your militia. So you might have less buys available or less coins or something. Um, and so your decks tend to vary a little bit when you've got throne room. You don't always get to play throne room on the cards that you want you're happy to sort of sacrifice payload in order to get the reliability benefits from throne room by playing other things so that's just something you need to be aware of but of course generally decks that use throne room are really really powerful um, and that's just because throne room is very strong um, so the inconsistency probably doesn't matter that much 
Um, but I guess there is, to some extent, that sort of little bit of swinginess involved with Throne Room. Um, you can get really, really good turns where everything works out perfectly, or you can get turns that just that just happen to not be so good. Two players with exactly the same cards in their deck will just have slightly different outcomes, and that's that's just because Dominion is a random game. You know, drawing cards in a random order. It's it's maybe slightly more amplified with Throne Room just because of the way Throne Room works when you play with it, but. You know, it's it's just part of the game. So this is quite a long video, so just a quick summary of some key important points here. Um, Throne Room, very strong, and it's very cheap, um, but a lot like um, Village, you don't really want it too early. Even though it's really strong, you've got to get your deck into the right position first. So um, it rewards you for building those very strong high-control deck-drawing engines. Um, it makes them even stronger, and they just zoom through, and they get... They get up to speed very quickly, and then they're very, very powerful when they do it. Um, it really wants you to have a lot of action cards in your deck. Um, it wants a good density of a lot of them, and it really helps to have non-terminal actions. So sometimes you can just choose to get a village effect out of it, and that sort of that undoes a lot of the reliability issues that you might have. Um, you sort of don't want to have to rely on chaining in the middle of your turn if you can help it. Um, but it's fine once you've drawn your deck to start chaining a load of throne rooms and save the actions that way. Um, you should be very careful with the other action cards in the kingdom and just double check whether or not they've got any gotchas in their text with conditional effects. Right, so it's obvious that like, you don't want to throw a library because its conditional draw sticks out, but sometimes some conditional stuff doesn't stick out. You might think, oh, I'm going to throw this mining village or these goons and it's like oh this wasn't as good as i thought it was right so just just be careful read card text carefully um and this last point i sort of already mentioned it uh, if you get too many too quickly uh, it's very bad it's a lot worse than village if you get too many too fast um in terms of using it as a village um so there you go so yeah so that's that's throne room so what we're going to do uh, what we normally do we are going to head over to the online client and we are going to generate some random kingdoms that involve throne room. And we're going to assess them and see what they're like. So let's take a look at this one here. So we got chapel to trash down very quickly. Um, we don't care about five cost cards straight away. Um, so militia is not so good in that regard. Um, we do have a regular village workshop. So Vassal seems like it might be quite nice here, just because you've got a high density of action cards. You can throne it for a lot of money. You've got villages. Um, you're definitely getting a workshop. So I think you open Chapel Workshop. You look to start... Workshop can gain throne rooms, so you look to gain a bunch of these. Eventually, it's nice to have a militia, I suppose. Um, there's no real draw or way to increase your hand size, except with Council Room. Um, but I don't think you need, like, Bandit. Um, you don't really need the golds here necessarily. I think you can get a lot of vassals and you can have a high density action card deck. Um, and it's okay if they occasionally dud, although you don't really, you're not very happy if it does. Um, I think you do eventually get a militia. You might get one council room just because playing with a three card hand really stinks here. Um, because every time like Vassal hits your workshop or something, you're in trouble. And if Vassal hits like throne room, you need cards in your hand. So I think you are getting council room, but you don't need it right away. Um, otherwise, this is like throne room makes this very, very powerful. You get to throne markets for extra buys. You can throne vassals for unbelievable amounts of cash very quickly, and you can gain a lot of cards very, very fast. So throne room is absolutely critical here. The chapel means that you just get unbelievable action density very quickly. Um, do you care about bandit? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe you just have enough vassals and like markets and militia combined with throne room to get the money. Maybe it's fine. Um, but I can see you just having no treasures. You never gain a single treasure in this kingdom. I can see that happening. No silvers, no golds. Just never get one. Um, and it's all throne room very, very strong on that kingdom. There. Uh, what have we got? Well, we've got another Chapel Kingdom here. Um, here's one where Throne Room is the only village, but we do have Laboratory and Merchant with plus one action, so we can sort of use it more like a traditional village. Now, Artisan gains you Labs, and Labs are very good with Throne Room because they draw a lot, 
and they give you village effects. So you really want a lot of labs and throne rooms early on. So we really want to get an artisan as soon as we can. We're, of course, opening chapel. I think we open militia just to try and hurt our opponent. I can see maybe there's an argument for smithy to try and hit six, but I don't know. I think you risk with hitting chapel, so that's bad. So I think we go chapel militia. Um, we will get a silver or two. Um, maybe we can pick up merchants over another silver, but we really we don't want to over trash because we want to get artisan as soon as we um, get the artisan. Um, we and we get our first lab, or if we got merchants earlier, actually we can start getting a throne room ASAP so that we can play the artisan to gain labs and also finish off our trashing with chapel. Um, then we can start throning the artisan when we don't need to play the chapel anymore. Use it to gain like lab and throne room. And we're off and we can start gaining merchants. We can start gaining vassals. Um, you've got a militia in your deck to throw in for money if you need it. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a very powerful engine here. Um, council room's the only buy. So we might need that anyway. But I can also see that if you're throwing artisans, like the lab pile's going to empty. Um, maybe, the, maybe these won't empty that quickly. I think we need a council room for... By, but we've got plenty of draw with the lab um, and I don't think our opponent is going to benefit that much from throwing council rooms. Oh, of course we have militia. Yeah, so we definitely get council rooms here. Um, we can pick some up with Artisan. This is this deck is going to be crazy strong at some point because Artisan will gain you so much. You will get a second Artisan. You might even get a third Artisan and you will just gain so many cards. Um, I guess the only problem is where's your money coming from? Well, I guess Merchant will be a bunch that you get extra coins when you throw them vassal will be a bunch um but you have to gain them so yeah at some point you're going to kick off with the throne room and buys and you're just going to end up with this whole load of money i guess vassals are not super great if you've already drawn your whole deck actually um so maybe we're just buying some gold anyway throne room is just let's not go too much into it because throne room is just ridiculous power on that board again because um, that's throne room. What have we got here? So we have sentry for trashing. That's good. Trashing. And um, we have witch. Uh, I think we want to. Yeah. So we want. We got some nice fives here. Uh, maybe not library. Yeah. Because we got witch. And we got lab. So we don't need library. But um, we are going to. Are we going to open double silver? I guess so. Um, it's really important that we get Sentry and Witch and we want to trash down. As soon as we get these cards, we can think about getting Throne Rooms. Um, it's a shame that we've got the two Silvers added to our deck, um, but we really want to start junking our opponent a lot. So having the Throne Rooms really nice. Um, then we can start thinking about Workshop once our deck's a bit under control and pick up a lot of these cards quickly. But I think the junking's more important. Um, once we have that done we can look to start drawing our decks with labs we could throw them might help to get a village now and then but really we're looking to use lab and witch for our draw um play markets unfortunately we do have to buy treasures in this kingdom we can workshop a load of merchants and get a bunch but it's not quite enough we are going to need to buy some gold but we can i think winning the witching war is going to be important here Possibly, just with Throne Room, you can start adding a load of curses. But I don't know, maybe Sentry can keep on top of that, actually. Because um, you can throw in the Sentry and trash down very fast. So yeah, I think you want the Sentry. Um, maybe you just get two. Maybe if you can get in control enough and you can like throw in Sentries, then which giving you two curses doesn't matter because the Sentry could trash them both. Um, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Throne Room. Throne Room... Maybe not quite as good on this board as it has been on the other two, but you're still getting some. I mean, it's very easy to get them because you've got Workshop and you can just gain a load of cards. Um, so, yeah, Throne Room's really nice there as well. Very powerful. What have we got here? So we've got a Festival Library I spot straight away. Um, we've got Chapel to thin down, so Festival Library's going to be good. Throne Room's nice with Festival Library. You can throw in the festivals for even more money, and it doesn't... You know, it reduces your hand size as well. And then you draw it with the library. And we got Artisan to just gain a load of these. Um, yeah, and that's sort of mainly what we're doing. Do we want a militia? Probably. I guess we open Chapel Militia and then we have it. Um, probably doesn't hurt to just play it anyway. Um, 
Yeah, uh, I mean, you can always stop playing it later, but maybe, I think you'll just keep playing it for money. But um, Throne Room's really nice, the festival library, because you just get a lot of money by throning festivals. And Throne Room's really nice in that it's not drawn new cards. You can rely on your library to do that instead. Um, it's not so good if your hand is only Throne Room Library, because not only does throning the library pointless, but you know, that's the end of your turn. But um, you can throne artisans and just get a whole load of these cards. Um, and it, it's normally the big problem with Festival Library is actually affording these expensive cards that you want a bunch of. But with Throne Room, that's not so much of a problem, right? You can gain a lot of them very quickly. And yeah, and that's sort of how that goes. So Throne Room is nice here. Um, it plays quite nicely with Festival Library. Um, you can end up with a whole bucket load of buys here, by the way, by throning festivals. And then you've got a Gardens, which could be some late game points, but you really don't want to be buying a load of coppers with Festival Library. But um, it's a possible option. And here's our last one, our Fifth Kingdom. Sort of we got um, Throne Room is the only village here, but we've got Lab and Market. Uh, Harbinger, not really. Um, another militia board. So we're going to open Chapel Militia here. And again, we want to get to Artisan. We want to pick up Labs and Markets. And we got Throne Room. And we want to throw in Labs, Markets, and Artisans. That's really what we do. We probably don't. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you get Workshop here just to get more Throne Rooms. Um, and then eventually you can just remodel it away into another nice five or a duchy or something later on. So, But we do that once we're in control. But yeah, Throne Room is just so powerful here because we can get a nice high density of really good cards. We are happy to throw in any of these and probably even Workshop as well and even Militia for more money and especially Artisan to just gain a whole load of stuff. Um, throne Room makes this deck really, really quick because of how you throw in Artisan and just gain a whole bunch of cards. Um, throne Room is very important here as well. So this was five random kingdoms, and Throne Room was incredibly powerful in all of them, but that's just Throne Room. If we had drawn like a big money board at some point, um, then of course Throne Room wouldn't have been very good. But of course one of the things is, is that because Throne Room is kind of like a village, it's a lot harder to get these like treasure-based decks. Um, but it's usually only if you have no draw at all. There's no way to increase your hand size. Does Throne Room tend to be quite poor? And that's just because it can't, you can't connect it with what you need, right? Like, so um, as long as you can draw, Throne Room tends to be very strong. And this sort of deck is no exception here. The, all these ones that we have seen, they all had good drawing in it. And so Throne Room was just very, very strong in all of those. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Um, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.